Welcome. This is section 8.5, and we're talking about properties of logs. Um, obviously, you would think that logs are going to have some properties attached to them. After all, logs are just the reverse or inverse of exponents, and we spent a lot of time this year talking about some different properties of exponents. So it would stand to reason that these expressions, these new expressions that we've been studying recently called logarithms, would also have some properties attached to them. And in fact, as you're going to see in this video, some of those properties look very similar to the ones that we saw when we were dealing with exponents. So let me give you the first one, and I took these, the wording, straight from your textbook, so you can fill them in into your notes. The first one is the product property of logarithms. So just like something special happens when you multiply exponents of like base, something special also happens when you take the logarithm of a product. And basically what that is, is the logarithm of a product is the same thing as the sum of all the logarithms of the factors separately. Okay, and as you see, there's an example there. So the book does log base 2 of 30, and they split that up and say log base 2 of 30, which is the 5 times 6, is the same thing as log base 2 of 5 plus log base 2 of 6. Okay, so let's look at an example of that. So we want to break down using the product property and approximate log base 4 of 192. Okay, and I give you a smaller log that you can approximate with. So let's think about 192 and how we can factor it. Well, one way to factor 192 is 64 and 3, which is convenient because on your notes you'll see that I gave you an approximation of log base 4 of 3. So we can kind of tell that we're going to need to use that in the problem. So we have 64 times 3, and then 64 can be broken down further into be 4 cubed times 3. Alright, so we have two factors, and we're taking the log of those two factors, 4 cubed times 3. So according to this product property, I can just add up the two logs separately. So that means log base 4 of 192 can be rewritten as log base 4 of 4 cubed plus log base 4 of 3. Okay, now well, let me go back a little bit. Now, log base 4 of 4 cubed. Think about what it means to take a log. We're looking for the exponent that when you raise 4 to that power, you get 4 cubed. So I hope at this point, we kind of can start to see that for something that trivial, the answer is just going to be 3. Because if you turned this into an exponential equation, you would get 4 to the y equals 4 cubed, so y equals 3. Now, I gave you the approximation of log base 4 of 3. That's 0.7925. So to answer this question, we just add up 3 and 0.7925. So that must mean log base 4 of 192 is approximately equal to 3.7925. Okay, let's look at another one. Now we want to approximate log base 4 of 32. Okay. Now 32, we can split that up to be the log base 4 of 8 times 4. We can break that down further to be log base 4 of 4 times 4 times 2, because 8 is 4 times 2. Now I gave you log base 4 of 2, though you probably could have figured that one out on your own again. It's 0.5. So we have four, three things that multiply to 32. Log base 4 of 4, log base 4 of 4, and log base 4 of 2. So using that product property, we can split each of these factors into a separate logarithmic expression and add them up. Log base 4 of 4 is just going to be 1. In fact, there's a property that says, it's not in your book, but I'm going to give it to you now, log base n of n will always be 1. So you may want to jot that down in your notes as well, even though it's not part of this section, it is an important property of logs. So that means that's 1, log base 4 of 4 again is 1, and then the book gives you 0.5 for log base 4 of 2. We can combine these up, so log base 4 of 32 must be 2.5. Have a couple more examples similar to that. Again, you're going to factor the larger number, and then you'll be able to split each of the factors up into a sum, and then use the given values in the problem to figure out the log of the higher number. Okay? Rewatch these examples if you need to, 
And when you're ready to go, you can continue with the video for the next two properties. Okay, so here's the next two properties. Let me do them one at a time. The first one is the quotient property of logarithms. So again, just like we had a product involving or a property involving products, we also have one involving quotients, and it sounds similar to what we saw with exponents. Okay? So the logarithm of a quotient, or think fraction, is just the difference of the logs of the numerator and the denominator. So again, in the example that the book gives you, log base 2 of 5 sixths is simply log base 2 of 5 minus log base 2 of 6. Okay? A third property is the, prod or the power property. So this one, if you're taking the logarithm of a power, you can move that power down, the exponent down, into the problem and multiply it by the log separately. Okay? So what that basically means, I'll rewrite this example and show you the math behind it. So if you've got log base 2 of 6 to the 5th, okay, and they may not give it to you in the form 6 to the 5th, you may have to think about it and factor the number down and see that it's just a power of 6. All that means you have to do is bring the 5 down in front of the log and say it's 5 times log 2 of 6. Uh, the first time I ever learned this, I don't know if this will be helpful to you depending on how much you know about sports, but the first time I learned this property when I was in high school, my math teacher used to say that this was called putting the tight end in motion. Because if you think of the way that 5 moves, it's almost like if you watch a football game and you know which position the tight end is before the quarterback snaps the football. Sometimes a tight end or a running back or somebody will go in motion behind the play. Very similar to that with this power. It kind of moves in front of the logarithm, and then you can multiply the power by the logarithm without the exponent. Okay? So if that helps you, think tight end in motion. If it doesn't help you, we'll figure out another way to get you to remember it. All right, so let's, let's look at some examples where we're going to put all these properties together and do some approximations. So let's find log base 2 of 25. All right, well, I gave you log base 2 of 5 in the problem. So you got to figure we got to rewrite 25 in terms of 5. And 25 is just 5 squared. So this is log base 2 of 5 squared. Now I have a power. So I'll bring that 2 and I'll move it down in front of the log. So log base 2 of 5 squared is just 2 times log base 2 of 5. So you're just going to multiply the number that I gave you by 2. So it's 2 times 2.3219. So log base 2 of 25 is approximately equal to 4.6438. Because again, using the power property, this is just like saying 2 times log 2, 5. Okay? Let's look at one more. All right, we're going to do log base 4 of 30. So now we're going to try to use more than one log. Okay? So if you look at the directions, I didn't write it all here. You're going to use the fact that we ha know the value of log base 4 of 2, the value of log base 4 of 3, and the value of log base 4 of 5 to figure out log base 4 of 30. So what I would do first is I would think about how I can break down my 30. And it turns out that 30 is the same thing as 2 times 3 times 5. How convenient. The numbers that I gave you multiply to get you 30. So what that means is, to approximate log base 4 of 30, we're just going to take log base 4 of 2, log base 4 of 3, and log base 4 of 5, and add them all up. And I gave you each of those decimal approximations, and we get 0 0.5, 0 0.7925, and 1.1610, and that adds up to 2.4535. So log base 4 of 30 is approximately equal to 2.4535. Let's try one more. Okay, let's do log base 4 of 4 thirds. Again, and all we know is log base 4 of 2, log base 4 of 3, and log base 4 of 5. The idea with all these properties, like I said, is we want to try to do things without using our calculators just yet to find log values. Um, we will be using the calculator, and eventually this will kind of be, some of these properties will kind of be a moot point. But also, more importantly than being able to find values of logs, what we're going to talk about in class is how we're going to use these properties to solve equations. 
um, as well that maybe have more than just one or two logs in them. So that's really where the properties are important, but I want to save that for class time, and that's why we're just going to talk about numbers in this video. So anyway, back to the example. Log base 4 of 4 thirds. Well, first thing I see is that 4 is a power of 2. So I'm going to rewrite this as log base 4, 2 squared over 3. Now I've got a fraction. I've got a quotient. This is division. So that means I can subtract the numerator from the denominator. And I get log base 4 of 2 squared minus log base 4 of 3. But I have that power that I have to worry about from the 2 squared. So in order to figure out what log base 4 of 2 squared is, I can move it down and I get 2 times log base 4 of 2 minus log base 4 of 3, which will be 2 times a half minus 0.7925, which equals 0 0.2025, or excuse me, 2075, my handwriting there. Um, you may have seen it a different way. You may not have thought of 4 as 2 squared. You may have just thought of this as log base 4 of 4, which is 1, because I showed you that property before. Either way, though, you would still get that final answer of 0 0.2075. Okay? So give a go at some of the practice problems. It's just applying these properties to use smaller values of logs to approximate the value of larger numbers of logs. And then, like I said, in class tomorrow, we're going to focus on using these properties a little bit further to try to solve some log equations the way we started off the week, and then we'll go from there. Okay? Any questions, please be sure to bring them to class, and I will see you tomorrow.